everyone, it's Susanna here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is part one on heart structure and blood flow. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now, let's get started. The human heart is made up of four chambers. It has a left side pump and it has a right side pump. The wall in between is called the interventricular septum. It's strong and it's very muscular. The upper chambers are called the right atrium and the left atrium. The lower chambers are the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to all the body organs. I'm drawing here a bright red blood cell to indicate that it is filled with oxygen. The right side of the heart pumps deoxygenated blood. Notice that I'm making a darker red blood cell here to indicate that this is deoxygenated blood. Remember that deoxygenated blood is dark red, oxygenated blood is bright red. In between the two ventricles, this interventricular septum, you can see in the name, inter means between the ventricles, and the septum is a wall. And so this thick wall prevents mixing of the blood from the two sides of the heart. The entire left ventricle has a much thicker wall, and that's because it has to build enough pressure to pump blood to the entire body. The right ventricle is a much thinner wall because it only has to build up enough pressure to push the blood to the lungs, which are on either side of the heart. Okay, so now you're probably looking at this and saying, huh, well, how does blood get in here? And how does blood get out of here for both sides of the heart, right? Well, that's a great question, and let's take a look at that. The left side of the heart pumps oxygen-rich blood to all the organs of the body. Blood is pumped up and out from the left ventricle via the largest blood vessel in your body, the aorta. This is the biggest artery in your body as well. This oxygenated blood is sent to the head, the chest, and the arms, and also down to the lower body. But where does this oxygenated blood come from? It comes from the pulmonary veins. These oxygenated veins bring blood from the lungs. And if you're wondering why they're purple, well, we draw them in purple because veins are typically deoxygenated. This is an exception in your body because it is a blood vessel going back to the heart. But what happens to that blood once it's in the aorta? Well, let's take a look at the different kinds of systemic blood vessels. So blood vessel types, there are generally three kinds of blood vessels. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. They typically are very strong and muscular. Look at the size of that wall. They're under high pressure, but this does decrease as the blood vessels get farther from the aorta. And the arterioles, they are arteries, but they're little arteries, and they gen tend to control the amount of blood flow that can go through a particular organ. So that systolic value that people hear with the blood pressure of 120 millimeters of mercury, that is going to be the high pressure that comes out through the aorta, and then it's just going to drop from that point on until it comes back around to the heart. Capillaries are the tiniest blood vessels. They are so small, they're microscopic. They're designed for exchange, so they carry deoxygenated blood away from an organ. Unlike the very muscular arteries, they have no muscle. This allows them to carry out their function of exchange. Blood pressure is going to maybe be around 35 millimeters of mercury at the start of a capillary bed. It's going to drop as it goes through, 
And some capillary beds, like the ones in the kidneys, require a significantly higher blood pressure at the start of the capillary bed in order to do its function of filtration. Now veins, they are actually tend to be the biggest in diameter. They're large, but their walls are thin and they're under very low pressure. Veins carry blood back to the heart. And as we'll see, they're so low pressure, like we're talking 10, 15 millimeters of mercury, sometimes less than that, so low pressure that they require to have valves in them to keep the blood from falling backwards down towards your feet. That's it for our lesson today. Stay tuned for part two of Heart Structure and Blood Flow. Thanks for watching and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.